Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of all these books that you should definitely buy. <laughs> jazz Piano Fundamentals, book one, book two, and playing solo jazz piano now in its second edition. And today, bringing on fan favorite, one of my favorites, Nancy Reese of Reese Piano Technique, who you can find at reesepianotechnique.com. That's R-E-E-S-E, -E -E, right? Pianotechnique.com. And, you know, if I'm Oprah, I think Nancy's my Dr. Phil who I go to <laughs> for piano technique. I think I'm nothing like Oprah and you're nothing like Dr. Phil, but you know, just <laughs> in this metaphor. Um, Nancy, it's great to see you. It's great to see you again, Jerry. So I wanted to chat with you and get your ideas and input because I've, I have this problem, this roadblock I keep on running into with students. And for me, it's in a jazz context, but I think it is kind of applicable across all contexts which is that they seem locked, what I, what I think of as locked through their arm. And particularly for me, it, I notice it in the elbow, mm -hmm. that the elbow is really not moving much. And to me, the result is this very, um, this very stagnant melodic line. Yes. Where in, in, like, in swing jazz, the issue is that they don't get any accents, that every note kind of comes in at the same volume in more ballad and you know classical type melodic playing is that they don't really give any shape to their line. It, it feels like note, 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 note. And so I wanted to get your feelings and thoughts as well as maybe share some of my own about the release of the elbow. And I guess I wanna start with my hypothesis here and get your feedback, which is that I feel like a lot of phrasing comes from that movement and flexibility of the upper arm and elbow. Does that resonate for you? Absolutely. The, okay. elbow, the elbow needs to feel empty, as if you could just do this. Completely empty. Yeah. But a lot of times, in fact, most of the time, when the elbow is really tight, like you're describing, it's also tight up here and in the back. Mm. Because a lot of people, if they're moving, their, if they're trying to move their whole arm, they swing, they move this upper bone, the humerus, within this joint right here, right? The ball, the ball joint of the shoulder? The ball joint. Okay. Well, that's, you're very limited if you're, if you're working from that place. So, so where this, do I want to work from instead? From your whole shoulder girdle. Okay. Your shoulder girdle includes your collarbones. Mm-hmm. Those are connected to your shoulder blade. So when your collarbones go up, your shoulder blades go up. When your when your arms when well, if you open your arms with your shoulder blades this way, can you feel can you feel some action in this area right here? You want to activate these yes. muscles. Yes. Okay. As if you're as if you're um you know those exercise bands that uh -huh. you can put and you can right uh huh. Yeah, okay. I totally feel that. Okay, you feel that. Okay, those are the muscles that you need to be using. Okay, and so... So this joint I, has to be mm -hmm. empty, and so does the elbow, and so does the wrist. Tell me more about empty. That's such an interesting word. I've never used that word to talk about this yeah, kind of thing before. Yeah, it is. An, I kind of like it, actually. It yeah, I like it too, about. but tell me what you mean. Like, if I, if you just drop your arms by your side and just... Uh -huh. and you can't see this. So I'm going to move my collarbones and my shoulder blades and everything, right? And so my arms, I'm using all my back muscles and all the muscles of the shoulder girdle, which actually include these, the, the shoulder blades, all the latissimus muscles that go around your ribs uh -huh. uh, parallel to the floor. That's all part of your shoulder girdle, actually. So when you move like this, you want, you want to be able to toss your arm and not have the elbow, not do this, for example. You see how I'm right. elbow stiff, even though I'm using my shoulder girdle muscles. So that's empty. This is empty. It, and it's empty of control. Is that what yeah, I think empty about of it? It's anything at the moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's empty, completely empty of control. Right. And then, okay, so two, two thoughts that I'm having. Okay. One is, and it should, Obvious, like it should be obvious to me, but I think of students as having a locked elbow. But of course, the elbow is just not a thing that we can lock. It's just a 
bone. Actually, so, no, we can. We can okay. lock our elbow. I just lock my elbow. But, and but is that happening further back in order to make right that? now? Right now, no. I'm oh, just I see it's like an upwards motion. I'm clenching. Right. Right. Uh huh. And so it, it's I can like... all this, and this is staying clenched right now. Right. So if I'm playing like this, uh -huh. right? I'm I'm moving a little just in this joint. Nothing else. Everything else is fixated. Got it. So would like a metaphor to envision this be you know like the the motion starting at the shoulder girdle? Is that the way to say it? The shoulder girdle. Shoulder girdle. Yeah. It's like it's a not, river. It's not not really just right here it's lower you want to mm -hmm. think lower than that okay i think the best image for people is to picture the two shoulder blades right uh -huh. and they can they can open up this way this is the top of the shoulder blades they can open that way they can go this way mm -hmm. into the spine they can go up this direction toward the shoulder etc etc mm -hmm. they're like plates that can adjust right directions so what a way to think about it like a metaphor would be that you know like the the river starts there and then there's all these places where we could intentionally or unintentionally dam the river so Absolutely. that the, the water doesn't pass and one of those would be locking the elbow we you know i think you could also lock this muscle yeah this month you know in the forearm like there's all these places where we could stop that flow of energy exactly Exactly. Uh -huh. And okay. I don't know if we talked about this last time, but a, a, a word I like to use is the action. Where is the action in the mm. body? Okay. And the action needs to be initiated from way back here mm. you know, in the whole body. And with the feet, you have to use your feet against the floor. You have to uh -huh. use your boots. Like I think we talked about that before, maybe. Did we? Um, I don't know, but that's very familiar language to me as a white oh, okay. side descendant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. We talked a lot about the floor and the bench. And the, yeah. Um, so. Okay. So I, I want to get into like maybe some exercises or activities that we could do to stimulate this in a sec, but I have one more question for you Okay. Um, that I'm thinking about, although I'm also just completely losing it. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, okay. So here's, here's like. To me, this is almost the question for teaching technique of this kind, which is like, there's the paradox that you want to be completely free, but you also need to control and have some firmness. Obviously you can't just be flopping around no, like no. a jellyfish everywhere. So I... how do we figure out where we need to control versus where we need to let go? Does well, that question make sense? It's the perfect question. Okay. Because the big question is with playing with a free technique that is not just doesn't feel just free physically, but that mm -hmm. you can achieve whatever sound you want, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. You have to be asking yourself, okay, where is the action? Where am I going, mm -hmm. going to act from? So the first thing is that everybody needs to know where their arm connects to their skeleton. And most people don't have a clue. They, they always say right here in this uh -huh. journal, right? But there's no bony connection here. It's just the, the humerus is just in the socket, in the shoulder uh -huh. socket, right? Which is, it's a great joint because it goes all kinds of directions. But, uh -huh. but the skeletal connection of the arm to the body is right here. Those uh -huh. two little knobs of your, <laughs> of your collarbones yeah that's a crazy that's thing <laughs> it, it is but imagine that you're going to just um if you're just going to put your arm out like this and i'm not i'm not doing i'm i'm holding this tense on purpose okay. right now. so i'll put my arm out right so now i, I feel tension all through here mm -hmm, totally right? now act like you're uh with your whole body mm -hmm. reach out to shake someone's hand ah there you go now Yes. Did you now put your hand on your collarbone? Did you okay. feel? Did you feel this bone go forward? Totally. It has to be able to move, and if it's not moving, it's because somebody's holding so much tension in their neck, shoulders, back, everywhere. So, 
so you want to start back there. That has to get loose first mm -hmm. and then loosen the rest of the way out. But it can't just be loosened. <laughs> Something's well, got to be controlling something. Oh, oh, it is. It is. But it's all these big muscles. Like, for example, should I, should I give you an example? Absolutely. Please. Um, I'm going to just scoot this back a little bit. Let's say that I'm working with somebody that's doing this. So arms are hanging, right? Okay. okay so do, roll your shoulders. Feel your collarbones moving. You can move them together. You can move them individually. Um, you can do this kind of thing. You can turn. The other thing you want to always be when you're mm -hmm. playing is loose in the hip joints mm. and loose in your knees because, because this thing is straight, <laughs> this wonderful keyboard that we have. We need to be able to adjust our torque at different uh -huh. angles, right? And adjust all these bones of the whole shoulder girdle, which like I said, goes down to your waist in the back. So, yeah, so that's the first thing. But if you're, if you're gonna show somebody how to even approach the keys, this is what I do. Like I'm just hanging. Mm -hmm. And if I had a student here in person, I would have them just toss my arm around. Now I'm gonna engage those muscles that we just talked about. So you, if you, you can actually touch a person right here and feel it's those muscles that sort of surround the back part of the armpit. Okay. You need to expand those. Now I have people focus on that spot because um, that's the way you can tell if you're doing it or not. Because some people want to do this, you know, just shrug their shoulders. Sure, yeah. Right? That doesn't help. That that hurts. That's yeah. Common. That's no good. So, so right now, so I'm hanging here and I'm moving. So I'm going to pick up my arm like this to, to tell my arm what my elbow needs to feel like. Now, I'm using a lot of muscles in my upper body, right? But if I shake my collarbone, if I use my, my, um, my muscles up here and in my back to move this, you see how my arm gets, I can do this. My, my elbow's completely empty. And you can pick it up, you can pick them up, you can throw them around, you can, yeah, anything like that. Okay. I think I'm, I think I'm with you. <laughs> okay, can you stand up and do it and let me take oh, a yeah. look? yeah, absolutely. So, first of all, and I saw you when you were talking about these muscles kind of doing that same, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I could to I could feel that right. You feel that right through here? Yeah. Yes. Now, but here's the thing. Your elbows are locked right now. Mm, okay. So unlock. So you're doing great, but just do that. What you're doing with the big muscles, but unlock your elbows. Ah. It means your hand and let, un unlock your wrists too. More, more let go. Uh-huh. And don't do any action in here because the temptation, at least right now, right? Uh -huh. The temptation is to do the action like you were just starting to do, like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And you don't, that's not what you want to do at all. Right. So now, there are times, what, there are times when we're going to we're going to use the the upper arm muscles, the biceps, and the uh, and the other tiny muscle that lies right under the bicep, and because that's the muscle that folds. Mm -hmm. The brachialis muscle is a tiny one that is right under here, attaches to the bone, and then crosses the elbow. So that one, its only purpose is to fold your arm up like this. Uh -huh. Right? But we get, but get, we get in the to... T-Rex position, right? <laughs> and it what? Sorry, say again. To get you into the T-Rex position. <laughs> oh, but yes, T-Rex. Right. <laughs> That's great, Jeremy. So try it again. Just okay. shake. So I'm just shake letting my, I'm letting everything hang. Let it hang. Everything, it's like, you know, um, like the end, this is the engine back here. Mm -hmm. It does, it does the, the hard work. Mm -hmm. And then I'm stretching that elastic band. Yeah, but if you stretch out and if, if you want to lose elbows, you've got to let go. Of See how mine, mine are hanging? My wrist I see. So I'm hanging from the elbow. 
It's not that the elbows themselves are hanging. On the elbow. Right. Mm. We're doing a lot of physical activity because we are athletes. We're super athletes. That's what I tell totally. everyone. We really are. Now, are, where are you moving from? Are you only move? I'm moving only from my shoulder girdle muscles. And you see how my arms are, they're hanging the whole time or they're getting tossed around because they're so loose. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yours want to stay a little bit active right here hmm. in this part. So what do you want me to do? Can you demonstrate? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to use only my back muscles and I'm going to pick this up. Now I can't pick it up high enough right now to get to the keys, right? So I have to, I have to lift. You're going to feel it way back here. So if I'm just going to go to the keys like that, I'm just going to be here. I'm, this is still hanging. If you were here, you could take my arm and toss it like this. Yeah, you look like a marionette. Yes, exactly like a marionette. Okay, now I'm here. Now and I'm at the keys. I'm correct <laughs> that I want to use my shoulder to get that up, right? And yeah, okay. think, think of your back. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm always yeah. like because you reticent just to move my shoulder in piano playing. That's such a no no. Oh, 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 let's talk about that. Okay. Okay, tell me more. <laughs> well, it's a classic, just like, you know, every seven year old pianist does yes. this and then that that's is. totally cutting off, you that know, the, the totally good energy. Yeah, it cuts off everything. And it these muscles get really tight and sore. Mm -hmm. So it's not, mm -hmm. it's not the kind of action where one shrugs one's shoulders okay. like this, right? So the shoulder is lifted by the back with that, or the, by the girdle muscles. The... Yes, by the, exactly. So kind of up like that, but then Your the arm is just totally... here in front, right? And we're trying to get, oh, look, I see, okay. I didn't see that. We, uh, we're trying to just get to the keys, right? Uh -huh. With this empty feeling. Now, most people will go to the keys like this. Now, you can't tell by looking at me. Mm -hmm. I'm holding a lot of tension right here. Mm. That's it. Now, I'm going to relax. We don't want to do that either. When I relax, I'm resting down. Right. We're, that's not what we're going to do. Okay. Right, because now I'm relaxed everywhere. All my shoulder girdle muscles are relaxed, my back muscles, uh -huh. these muscles. The piano's holding up my hand. So there's no action. No, no action. So here, here we get to the where's the action then. Yeah. We have to be, when we're playing, we have to go from relaxed into neutral. So now what I'm going to do right here that I'm laying into those keys, I'm going to engage these muscles back here that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now there. Are, now I'm this way. This is still. Do it, do, do it again. I was looking down. That's okay. Um, should I turn this way? Which is better? No, no I, th I think you're fine. We're, fine. We're, we're, okay. All right. So let's say that I'm going to pick my arm up here. That's relaxation. That's relax. Everything's empty. Everything's empty. I'm just yeah. It's like I'm laying back in an easy chair, right? Uh -huh. And you can't move fast get to get out of an easy chair or a recliner or whatever if you're mm -hmm. really relaxed you, there's got to be you've got to be your body's got to be engaged mm -hmm. okay so there i'm relaxed now what i'm doing and you won't be able, i don't think you'll be able to see this very much can you see a little bit i can see a little lift i'm exaggerating a little yeah. right? but i'm engaging these i'm thinking of my shoulder blades and the muscles that Many uh -huh. muscles that attach to them. Those same muscles that you would activate if you're doing that. Exercise. Yes, I'm doing that. Right, I'm doing that. Now, so now I'll, I'll lay, I'll lay down again. Okay, now I'm activating these muscles. Mm -hmm. So now you see, I'm uh, I'm touching the keys, but I'm just in contact with them. Right. As though I'm touching my nose. Yeah. There's this no makes me way. think of something that my my teacher Sophia used to say. She said to be like like a hummingbird at the piano. Exactly. Like active. active. You're alive. Active. You're there. You're active, but you're not forcing anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a beautiful yeah. metaphor. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, so 
The other way to do it, because this thing is such a trigger, this keyboard that we have, right? It triggers us to do any old stuff we've always done. So, so what I like to do is something like this. Um, okay, so the person's completely loose, and they lift, they pick the up with the back, and then they just come in contact with the keys. Now, that's what I call neutral. It's like neutral in a car. Uh -huh. You're not going anywhere. Right, but, the engine, but the engine's but the engine is ready. running. Yeah, the engine is absolutely engaged. And so mm -hmm. your engine is really, in, it's completely engaged. Can I share a couple of thoughts that I'm, that I'm having and, and run them by you? Absolutely. So one thing that I'm thinking about is that when I see my students who have, you know, these problems of a locked elbow or tension there, I've been telling them to relax. And I'm, I'm now feeling like that's really the wrong word. I mean, we do want them to relax that joint, but we want them to change where the action is. Maybe that's a better way to frame it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I tell people all the time, don't think about relaxing because you're not mm -hmm. going to be relaxed. <laughs> right. I mean, you can't be if you're going to play, you know? So, and it's not just that you're going to engage these muscles. The abs need to be engaged. And like I said, the glutes, mm -hmm. the legs, all of it, it's all part of the whole machine. Here's another metaphor that's coming to mind is, you know, like the, the runners who are at the starting line for a race. It's, that's so funny you mentioned that because I was picturing that a while ago when we were talking. Really? Yes. Oh, cool. I love yes. it. Yes. Um, okay. Well, I, I wanted to also just, I think you said something really important that I want to also just to highlight and think about, you said the piano's a trigger. Um, a trigger, yeah. Yeah, and you know, I know that you work with focal dystonia folks for who it's literally like a physical trigger. Absolutely. But I've, I've noticed so much that when I work with students or for myself on a technical concept away from the piano, mm -hmm. it's so much more effective because there's Absolutely. almost, like there's this mental thing that happens of fear of playing the wrong note or whatever it might be, whatever we're triggered by that we want to do it a certain way at the piano that we're not capable of changing our habits so often when we're actually at the instrument. Would, would you agree? So, do you have anything to add to that? Absolutely. I always have people do things away from the piano. And I talk yeah. about the trigger of this all the time. Yeah. Because it's not just for people who have played maybe in a tense way their whole life or even for a year or two. But if, if a four-year-old were to walk in my door mm. and, and go up to this, they're going to, they're going to do this. It's a trigger for everybody. Mm. No matter, no matter who it is. It, cause it looks like these things need to be pushed, mm. but they don't, <laughs> they don't need to be pushed. Okay. Um, yeah. And I'm thinking about another, you know, element, which isn't necessarily specific to the piano, but I often do this exercise with students where I have them tap rhythms and they're just like great at tapping or clapping rhythm, improvising. And then as soon as I'm, you know, I say something like, well, take those rhythms that you're tapping and play them on one note on the piano. They could sometimes do one note, but if I say, well, take those rhythms, alternate between two different notes. No. They, they lose the rhythmic vivacity, the vibrance, yes. the, the joy of the tapping is totally gone when like it starts to be notes. So I think it's just so great to keep in mind that the piano is a trigger in so yeah. many different ways. In so many ways for anybody. Yeah. Great. So, sorry. So, sorry to interrupt your, your flow, but you're just saying so many things that are sparking ideas. No, I don't, don't mind interrupting because I can... <laughs> Get on a roll. <laughs> um, okay, so do you have further to go with this? Or I also would love some activities inc that include some notes that people could try if there are people who lock up their elbow or um, are, are putting the action in the wrong place. Okay, so there's there are a couple of components to that because okay. we're going to use these big muscles, right? We're going to also use our finer muscles, but if this is tight, then you're up the creek. That's all there is. So what I would do is um, I would I would do exactly what I showed you about having somebody just lift their arm and then I would move their arm. I would move this bone 
right? Because they're, they're free up here. And I would let them see that if I move this bone, this, if this is free and empty, it's going to get moved. It's going to get turned over. It's going to turn over the other way. It's going to roll around. The hand is also getting moved. Mm. So in other words, let me rephrase that. You don't have to move the forearm from the elbow. It will be moved. It, it is moved by the muscles further back. Is that what you're saying? It is moved. That's exactly right. Ah, so just a reframing. I don't even have to move this. It will well, no, be because if you if you're moving it, if this if this forearm is going to move, mm -hmm. unless you're empty back here, then it's like any sort of lever, right? The, the, a lever has to have a, a solid. <laughs> you said lever. I thought you said lover, and I thought, oh, where is this going? Oh. <laughs> 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 not that an accent, Jim. <laughs> oh, that was good. I like that. So anyway, and the other thing I do with people is I do a lot of hands-on. Are your lessons are, are a lot online, right? I do some online, some in person. Yeah, some in person. Yeah, mine mine are both too. But I will if they're with me, or I'd have them do this for themselves. I'd have them okay. Hold hold this bone up, just artificially. Now. Move this, but just move this bone and see what happens. Yeah, now that's what that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. right. So that's the first step. Okay. And then um, the other thing is like when you were talking about doing well. Let me back up. Uh -huh. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, most most pianists think that the motion and the action to get a sound out of a key is downward. Mm. And that's actually not what you want to do. I mean, you can do it. You know, people have been taught for, for, yeah, for hundreds of years already. Drop your weight into the key, right? The problem with that is that you don't have, if you're dropping your weight, you don't have any control really over what sound you're going to get. You don't have any kind of fine tuning. Because dropping your, implies relaxation. It, it absolutely relaxation. Right. And we already kind of established that relaxation. That just means you're yeah. going to, you know, you got to have the action somewhere. You can't be empty ever. But, right. Exactly. Okay. So, for example, if you want to play something softly, if I just want to play middle C with my middle finger, notice what I'm doing. Can you see, can you see my, this bone right here? That's funny because I guarantee you zero percent of people were looking there. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, zero. That's why zero. I first that, that you have, they have to have their own body map of how their body yeah. is connected. And it's right here. That's, so these bones have got to be moving. Right. And if they're not, then you're not going to be able to get the sound that you want or anything that you want. Yeah, really. I love this because this is so similar to what I say for my students, but you have more knowledge and better language to actually describe the mechanisms. But I, I, I'm constantly telling my students, like, look, I'm barely moving anything. <laughs> like, my finger's yes, not moving. It's being moved. My finger's being moved, too. Yeah. And that's what, yeah. Exactly. And, but the thing is, people aren't ever looking for that. They're, they're just... They're fixated on, I have to do something that direct. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it, I get it because it's the most direct, it. it's, it's the it's, most direct it's way of making that sound. <laughs> yeah, it of course. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. But do this, I, and I'm coming up with my shoulder girdle to play these, and I'm coming up slowly. Oh. Now, if I want more sound, I'm going to come up quicker back here. And you're exaggerating the motion so we can see it. Or is that the motion you would usually do? Say that again. Are you exaggerating the motion so we can see it? Or? Nope, I'm not. That's no, the normal. I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. So here I am soft. Now, you're, what you're going to see, maybe I should take my hand away here. This bone is moving. I'm going to put my pedal down too. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, 
quickness from this it's the philosophy. Speed. Right. It's the speed of the descent of the key. Okay. And you can't, you have very limited ability to control that by dropping into a key mm. or relaxing or any of those things. Whereas this way, you're completely controlling how fast that key goes down and then how fast the hammer smacks the string. Now, I'll do it another way. I'm going to do it the other way. For the nope. <laughs> End it. Yeah. Plus, I thought there was pressure on my middle finger, which is the one I'm using. Mm, uh -huh. Because no matter how loudly you're playing, if you come in con only come in contact with your nose, that's what you need to feel at the bottom of the key. No more than that. I see. You mean the, the kind of pressure and, and that I use, would get. Yeah, and don't use your finger. Or don't use your finger. Just have have your fingers be loose and just come in contact with it. Right. That's it. So I there was no there was no more pressure on my finger from when I did it softly mm -hmm. from when I did it loudly on the tip of my finger. It's just nothing. It's just this. Yeah. My, so if I always used to say that playing piano with your fingers is like the tail wagging the dog. It is the test of shit. So true. It is such a flaw. Yeah, I love that. Or, you know, I, I always think of the metaphor of running too, that it's like we don't run with our feet, even though that's what's actually doing the touching of, of the ground, right? Yes, it's exactly the same. Um, but our now, okay, so yes. I completely appreciate this, but my devil's advocate uh, question is kind of two interrelated parts. Like, one, okay, I can play a note like that. How do I actually play music like that? And two, the piano is triggering. So how do we get our students to play that way despite the triggers? I know that's a huge question, um, but I guess that's that's what I'm here to have you answer, Nancy. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I come to you. <laughs> well, that has many parts. Yeah, I'm sure. It's not a quick answer for a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> the person has to be in their body. They can't be thinking. They can't be thinking, oh, what's the next note, right? So, so the way I usually teach this kind of thing is to have them do splashes, mm. like for example. You're talking my language. Yeah, right. So, uh, oh, here's the other thing I do. They, they love this. Yeah. I turn on the Tchaikovsky First Concerto, right? And I say, and this could be, well, I don't teach little kids anymore, but anyway, no matter, uh, whoever it is, I would say, okay, you're going to play the Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto, the opening, just mm. like you would need to if you really wanted to play it you really were gonna play it. so i have them they first have to get this right then they have to get to here and then they have to make sure they're in neutral so that this is engaged back here you gotta start in neutral always mm -hmm. and then what i would do is i would have i would have them learn to do this so they're going to come back first and touch and come back and so the, the action of that is like the mechanism on train cars that uh -huh. um yep I totally you know, know. I immediately know what you mean. That, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So it, it goes it goes in this sort of an elliptical mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And when it does, look what look what's happening up here. Right? Because my shoulder my my, my collarbones are moving, so my shoulder blades are also moving. Now I can also do this and I can just have this completely limp. Uh-huh. Right. But that, then what? That's all you've got is just being limp, right? You don't have the, uh, the ability to be to play with colorful sounds, hmm. all the different sounds that one wants. So that so I so we do a lot of this. Okay. Do a lot of uh, reach, reaching out to act like you're going to shake the hand with the elbows loose. The whole, now, the, tell, you, tell me if you like this motion. I was telling my students recently that it was like they're going to um, roll dice. Oh, that's a, that's a great one. Do you like that? Yeah. Let's see. Let me watch you roll the dice. So I'm I, <laughs> I'm roll. So I, I guess it's kind of like shaking the hand. Yes, it is. 
just make sure that you're that you're starting you're shaking farther back is all mm. it's kind of like if you were just gonna um slap somebody the, yeah <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so yeah, and but, i can feel that in those muscles yeah all the way back there absolutely you will you will because we don't ever have to think about those muscles that's the other issue with this we just don't ever have to think about them. But for this, you have to be focused back there. Okay. All right, yeah. Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky. So first then, before we got to Tchaikovsky, then we would do this. We would. I'm, I'm doing this um, sort of elliptical action with uh -huh. my shoulder girdle muscles and bones. These bones are moving. My shoulder blade's moving. I can feel it. And yep. just that. Now... After this, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just do in my palm. I'm going to where my palm is touching the white keys. Um, so then when I decide I want to have a sound, I'm going to just do a quicker action right here. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How's your elbow? Are you are you doing very much with this in this joint? Are you acting in this joint right now? Because for now you don't want to be acting in this joint. I don't think I, don't think I am. Okay, good. No, I just want to check. I'm feeling a lot right here. I don't know if that's appropriate. Uh, that's you don't want to feel it right here. Uh huh. I mean, these are going to move. They're going to uh -huh. be acting, but you don't want them to be the primary action you want to feel it down lower in your back so I really i don't even if i put my hand here on these muscles uh -huh. you're going to feel that they're engaged, they're engaged. That, yeah that's okay but okay. you don't want to be initiating from up here. right so now I'm wondering, mm -hmm. uh, do that one more time, if you don't mind. Your collar, put your other hand on your collarbone. Uh -huh. Feel if the collarbone lifts, starting here and going all the way out to here. Is it lifting? I wouldn't say that it's lifting. I can okay, feel it kind of moving. To... That's why I was asking, because it didn't look like it was. So it, now I can feel it lifting. Yes, yeah, so now it's lifting. Here, I can move this microphone too. Oh, oh good, you can, great. Uh -huh. uh, and it's not an abrupt thing, it's just take your time with it. Uh, and then, yeah, so, so that's a big action. And then you, to go back down, you're not going to do another action to go down. You're just going to quit doing the action you just did. Right. Okay. Right. And notice I've got my hand on my leg. This is another good thing for people because mm -hmm. uh, if they play the piano on their leg, like they most people do on the piano, it would look mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. Right. And with the palm, you're going to hear it and you're going to feel it. It doesn't feel good. Right. Right? Uh -huh. So um, so it's, it's coming in contact with it, but there's really no not much sound right now. But if I do it fast, there's going to be a sound. Here's what I'm not seeing, Jeremy. Yeah. I'm not seeing this. I'm not seeing this. Now, this is moving some in this joint. Don't get me wrong. Right. It's but it's this. This bone is also being moved by what I'm doing farther back. Hmm. Yeah, this is why you want to come and do an in-person class. I know. Anytime. That's, <laughs> that's why you take the trip out to Boise and call that's me. That's right. Speak. That's right. Got to come to Boise. <laughs> Not necessarily, but okay. So, so imagine 
do a dog paddle. Imagine, it's not exactly a dog paddle, that would be like this, but take both arms at the same time and do this. You're just moving your arms, you're in the pool. Uh-huh. Now, I feel like I'm making bigger circles with this than you mm -hmm. are. Make I'm, circles. I'm scared of moving my shoulders too much. That scares me. <laughs> Why? Why? Because um, you were caught that way. I associate it with tension. Oh, oh, okay. And I, yeah, I kind of associate with tension and control. Imagine, think of it more as it's yoga. It's just moving. Mm -hmm. It's not that you're going to be tight up here. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're tight and you try to move, that yeah, will feel like tension. But mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. I'm just, yeah. Yeah. I don't you're, feel that way. I don't feel work, tension at all. I feel action. Action mm -hmm. is the word. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing, it's hard to do when you're sitting at the keyboard, by the way, mm -hmm. because you've got okay. all this stuff in front of you. So I would do a lot of this. Also, talk about uh, watching ballet dancers of any style um, because they are constantly moving mm -hmm. using this part of their body, right? Yeah, yeah, and you that's now that doesn't look so tight. Does it still feel no? Empty? It doesn't look tight. Or okay, now tight. relax your jaw, let your jaw just be, mm -hmm. and relax your neck. In fact, let your neck roll around and do that. Yeah, is it loose? I think so. Yeah. Okay, good. Just checking, <laughs> <laughs> it's not tight. Okay, now I'm going to do something. Watch me. Mm -hmm. What am I doing that's not 100% great? It seems like there's some holding somewhere. Yes, it's holding this hole. All mm -hmm. these muscles are holding. Uh -huh. I'm tensing my elbow. So, but now this yeah. is what you want. Uh -huh. right? Yeah, loosey goosey. Or you could think of, if you were thinking of swimming, but not by cupping your hands, you know, to actually make progress in the water, but just making that swimming motion. Mm, yeah. Okay. Can you lower your screen any, or is it as low as it'll go? I could go like that. Does that help? Okay. Now, this is looking really good now, Jeremy. Much Thank better. You. How are you feeling? A little strange. Oh, I bet. It is strange. Okay, but here's the thing. If you're doing this motion, which we do this all, a lot at the piano, one arm and then the other, you know, your knees, let me see if I can do this. You can see. All right. If I'm going to do that same motion up here, can you see what's happening with my knee? I can. Yeah. Okay. Kind so, of in and out going. Yes, yeah, so if I'm going forward with this, my right side, I'm, I'm loose in my hip joints and I'm swiveling mm -hmm. my torso so that this leg is going to go forward when this arm goes forward. Mm -hmm. And then this, this, leg, this leg is going to be pushed forward. But it's, you want to feel loose in your waist because mm -hmm. there's no joint there, first of all. But you want to feel it right here that you can swivel forward and backwards. And your torso, and it looks like your torso has gotten freer. Now free your torso yeah, totally. up more. Now this is looking good, Jeremy. Yeah. Okay. How you doing? <laughs> I feel pretty loose. Yeah. Always check your jaw. I had a teacher tell me to start chewing gum while I played to loosen my jaw. It kind of worked. Well, that's interesting. I haven't I thought. I developed that. a gum habit, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you're looking great. So you want to play Tchaikovsky? Uh, I do. Okay, so so what I would do then I'd have them just put their hands down here. Mm -hmm. and put the pedal down. Let's see. Tell me, can you see? Yeah. All right, so I'm put the pedal down. 
Now, the first thing I have to do, I'm if I'm just here, I'm in neutral now, right? Here I'm relaxed. Here I'm in neutral. And I don't go below, I don't do anything less than neutral. I don't let go anymore with these okay. muscles. I mean, they, they come and go, they act, and then you quit acting, but you don't go below neutral because then you've got them. Drop yeah. it. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into this cycle. Now, the other thing I'm doing with this, as, as my arms need to go forward, I'm going forward from my hip joints. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. I, but my so many, are doing yeah, that. so many people don't, they don't budge from right here. Mm, it's just uh-huh. all here up. Now I'm kind of rolling off of my glute, glutes a little bit. Is yeah. Right? Yeah. You just good. Okay. So now what you're going to do at some point, you're just going to do a quicker. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. How was it? I thought the first one was good, and then the next two were not quite as good. The first one felt really like I was totally in the action, and as I started moving, I think I started controlling more. Yes, you got because you got triggered. I think I did. Let me try again. Let me see if I okay. can. Okay. I'm getting into the motion. Oh, that was pretty good. Yeah, that looked completely different from the last two from the previous go around. Mm, okay. Okay. Do you want anything different? Uh, yeah, I want you to do it a little bit louder, but I don't want you to be thinking mm. loud because that right. triggers the body to quicker back. motion sure. from back here. Right. And then I think the other thing is that I got so comfortable leaning in this way for the handshake that I didn't really move my torso like I should have to lean into the handshake over there. That's right. You got to do the handshake both directions. So when you have your students doing handshakes, do the opposite side. Mm, okay. And they really need to feel that. And the, and the abs are really going to work actually a lot. You know, mm. you ever watch Daniil Trifonov play? I love him. Incredible. Um, he's he's unbelievable. The best. Well, he he's he uses his body to perfection. So you know how he sweats so much when he's doing a performance <laughs> or a concerto or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of bodily work. Mm -hmm. It's not just the hot lights. <laughs> More than that. So yeah. All right, I'm gonna try to get three loud sounds. Yeah. Moving my torso a little bit more. Uh huh. I'm not think. Not thinking loud. Thinking. Not thinking loud. Just think. Pooh! I've got to pull something. Okay. Quick. <laughs> Different? Yeah, it was. I like the image of I have to pull something. That's very okay. helpful. That is very helpful. Make sure that when you pull it, you're not pulling back this way. You've got to pull. Mm -hmm. Pull. Uh, yeah. So okay. you're gonna you should feel some of it back here in your triceps, but you're gonna really feel it back here in the back. Palm. Pull. Okay. Up. Let me try again with that in mind because I was pulling like a canoe. Yeah, you were pulling straight back. You weren't doing the all the motions that we do, the actions that we do, need to be uh, circular in mm -hmm. some way. Okay. That's how we most freely move, is in, not in straight lines. Definitely. All right, so. here we go. The beautiful... No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the first and third were good. The middle one wasn't quite as good, but that's true. The yeah. first and third, you looked like you were playing the piece, the right. real style. All right, here we go. If you don't mind. Sure. <laughs> if anybody's still watching this video, it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Now they were each a little different. Mm. Did you feel quick? Did you feel a flow or did you feel quick, sudden actions? I'm not sure. I, I guess a little bit more of the quick. What I noticed that time is that 
like I got a little in my head because the first one I instinctively noticed that I really pushed with my foot, which I think was like kind of good. It was, uh, like, it was very That's active, why... but then I started questioning. <laughs> Everybody starts to question, but the thing is, that's why when you think about the feet and the timing and the timing of the glutes and everything, because yeah. if, if your if your body is just like loose from the from the waist or the hips down, you're really limited. Mm. Because if you're playing that opening, you're going to be doing you're going you're going to have your preps. But see how my preps are sort of rounded. <laughs> flow of the that flow. Uh -huh. I don't feel sudden yeah it's action. a little bit of a paradox because to make a loud sound it has to be faster it has to be fast it doesn't um, and yet it needs to be within the flow right but it doesn't yeah. have to be fast you have to play fast for it to move fast right mm -hmm. fast mm -hmm. happens first of all you're going to be here your hands are going to come in contact with the keys when once you touch the keys that's mm. one quick okay. action happens. All right. All right. See if that helps. I don't know if it will. Is that different or the same? It was a little different. Yeah. Okay. I felt I was coming up more. Good. From here. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I felt that especially on the first one. Great. So let's talk about what happens in between each set of steps. Okay. That, that's an issue for everybody. Great. So if I'm here, I'm touching, I'm going to do my prep motion, and then I'm going to start. Now, that one I didn't pull up very fast, but I'm going to mm -hmm. do it faster this time. Now, what do I feel like when I'm here moving from point A to point B is the other question, right? So, so now... These muscles are all engaged, but this is all empty. Mm, uh -huh. I'm still empty. Now I'm touching the keys, and then I'm going to... So you have to time it, because when, when anybody's used to playing down, the action of the body and the sound are simultaneous. When you play this way, you have a lot of action, and then you hear the sound. Mm. Yeah, and that's interesting because we talk to students about staying active between the sounds, but I think so often that's misinterpreted in terms of where the action is, like where you're active, right? They'll stay active between the sounds by holding their elbow or arm, right? And you're right. saying the same thing. You're saying be active between the sounds, but in you but know, here and here. Here, right. Not in here. Yeah. Okay. Right. And not only in here. I mean, this bone is going to move in that joint because that's what it does. But yeah, the the it's like you were doing the, a butterfly stroke swimming, mm -hmm. and it's very continuous. Okay. And you have sharp edges around the movements. Getting there, Jeremy. It's getting there. <laughs> okay. okay, now, um, can I you? Thought I, I thought I did well between the second and third one, kind of staying up, but not between the first and second. That's right what now. you did. Yeah. So let me ask you this: Are when you, when you hear the sound, the or you let's say you've heard the first sound, are you are you in contact with the keys before you start your big pull to make the second sound? I have no idea. <laughs> ah, okay. So you've got to you've got to be there first, so that you've got to touch here in the cycle of this. So right, I'm touch, and then, then I, as I feel my hand there, then I do the speedy pull up. That's, that's the trigger. That's 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 the cue. To... That's the cue. Yeah, that's right. the cue. Feel first, and then start your pull. Getting in the zone. Good. Be in your body. How was that one? Was it different? Yeah, it was a little different. I was more conscious of where I was feeling the keys and how the timing was. That's I'm not sure that I quite 
got it yet, but I was more conscious. Okay, do it once more, let's see. I thought the third one, I kind of had that timing that you discussed. Okay. Um, yeah. No? Maybe. <laughs> that's, that's why I was asking. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm feeling. I'm, yes. I think I'm pretty, like, I'm on the right track, <laughs> I think. Well, I'm completely yeah. on the right track because we tend to think when we play. Yeah. And we need to be more, like I said, in our body. Paying right, that, that cue to feel the key before making your move gets me to really think about what I'm feeling instead of, you know, intellectualizing. That's exactly. Because you're going to, if you're going to be accurate, if you're playing the actual opening, play, can you play the actual opening? The you play default? it first. You do it first. <laughs> no, you do it first. <laughs> I've been in forever. Let me see. I can't remember exactly what it is. <laughs> this piece, but I'll, I'll fake it. Um, God, it's funny. As soon as I think about playing a chord, I have a harder time. So let me... Of course. Yeah. That's normal. Yeah. <laughs> That's not quite right. It's not as good as it was when I was just playing the. That's right, the because you were playing notes, right? This is what happens to everybody. That's why. Well, and, and yeah, like what you said about finding the key first. I noticed that my instinct was like, I got to, I'm getting to that next chord really early to be safe, right? I got there really early, hung out there, and then played it. And okay, um, okay. you you bring up a really interesting point. Yeah. Here's the thing. Let's say you're gonna play that. Notice, I'm going to try to do slow motion. I don't know if this will work. Okay. I've got to do a big, quick prep if I'm going to do a big, loud chord, right? So now I'm here. I've tried to Yours looked more, I feel like mine is more um, cyclical. Uh, uh -huh. Yours looks a little bit more like there's certain quick actions mm. that don't fit with the whole flow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me give it another try. Okay. Now that was way better. Yeah, some of them are better than others, but that's true. That's true. Yeah. I thought the first two, especially, did kind of have a, a flow yes, between them. Yes, it looked like. You know, are you using your glutes and are you using are your abs engaged? Um, glutes definitely, abs maybe. Okay, so <laughs> um, I, it's definitely a full body experience for me to play these chords. My my left foot is very engaged. My yes. glutes are definitely engaged. When um, are you engaged? Let me ask you this: When when are you engaging your glutes? And I mean, specifically. Like in the prep, I would say. Okay, that's good. But then after that, on the chord that you're going to actually hear, when are you engaging them? Or are you, are you, let me ask you this, are you engaging them and keeping them engaged? I think they're pretty engaged, but I'm definitely like, I'm most conscious during that prep. Okay. Of kind of using them to almost in, like assist in a slight lift mm -hmm. to get my okay. body over. Okay, we're getting somewhere with this. Okay. So if I'm doing this, I do a prep right here, and then I do a bigger prep as I as I am starting to pull. Not prep. I meant to say squeeze the glutes. So if I do it, if I do it without playing, this is what's happening to my body, mm -hmm. right? My body's getting moved, my torso. Yes. And that, otherwise, if you don't do that, if you don't use your glutes and you're just doing this with these muscles, it's just this. I just, I can't even do it. It feels so yucky. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. As uh -huh. opposed to this whole body, pull with the body, 
pull with the body, pull with the body, and you want to feel like you're rolling. Right, and I love that, you know, talking about moved or being moved, that like, to me, and I'm sure there's more to this, but like, I feel like those two things that are touching the floor or the bench, my foot and the glutes are moved, those are the places I can move my body. Right, exactly. I can cause my body to move from my my left foot. With your left foot, absolutely. Oh yeah, the left and foot from my glutes. Your left foot's going down, right, while your torso oh, yeah. is up. Okay, exactly. so if you're when you, if you were just playing these chords, you want to do this. You want to do squeeze and then quit squeezing. Squeeze, squeeze, mm-hmm. squeeze, and then quit. Squeeze and then quit. Squeeze and then quit. So there's always when you do any action, playing this way, after every action. There's always a, just quitting the action, not relaxing, but quitting the action that you just did. Hmm. Quitting the action. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give one more try to these chords, but I realize <laughs> you've been so generous with your time. We've been on here for so long. I can always talk every, to you. See, it goes. So every time. <laughs> but this time I was like, oh, I'm just going to, only 20 minutes. I'm, I'll, I'll let her go. And then she gets <laughs> one <in> an hour. <laughs> Um, so I don't mind at all. Oh, it takes time you. because we're not used to doing it this way, you not know. Not at all. I mean, not at all. Yeah, I feel like I'm so much further along than my students, and yet I have so much, you know, so so far to go. Um, but this is helpful to give me some context to help myself and, and to help them. Um, all right, here's my final performance of the concerto. Okay, so before you start, yeah. say to yourself, okay. I'm doing my rolling arm. My arms are rolling, right? I'm timing my squeezes of my glutes mm-hmm. to the to the point where my hands are on the keys, and then I, as I'm sque- I'm squeezing, and then I hear the sound. Mm-hmm. Squeeze first, hear the sound. Squeeze and sound. Okay. And then quit squeezing between the chords, and then do it again. <laughs> And between the chords, I'm staying engaged, but not tight here. Uh huh. Staying engaged from the back. Yes. And right, no, no here's the other thing. No quick motions like this. Think rounded. Oh. Everything's rounded. Yeah. Everything's pull up, up, not pull in. Exactly. Pull, pull up oh. and around. Up and around. Up and around. Imagine this piece is that metal piece on the side of the car, right? Mm -hmm. Hook to the wheels. It goes this way. It's a very circular action. Well, it's elliptical, really, but you're going to flip it like you're moving in a circle. a little bit surprised by how big of a sound I got on some of those chords. Aha, uh-huh. yes, of course. You, you can get a huge sound. Yeah. And it's not effortful at all. No, not, even though there's so tiring. much action. No, it's not tiring because you're... Not at all. Not at all. Not at all tiring. Well, Nancy, this has been an absolute treat, as it always is. I've learned a lot. I need to do a lot of thinking. I need to do a lot of practicing. Um, <laughs> and I know that people have enjoyed it. And I just want to remind everyone that they can find you at reesepianotechnique.com, right? R-E-E-S-E, yes. pianotechnique.com. Anything else you would like to plug? Because you've been so generous. Uh, oh, uh, I can't think of anything else. I'm about okay. to start a Facebook group, actually. You've been saying that for a year. I'll think something <laughs> that, I know. Yeah, I'll have All been. right, well, really whatever, <laughs> yeah. whatever you want to do that and promote it, you come back on. Um, okay. And we'll we'll promote it. We'll get some members of your Facebook group. Um, Thank you. And it's just a delight. Thank you so much. Oh, it's always a delight to see you and play around with this instrument with you. Yeah, I love (laughs) it. (laughs) Um, Come visit in California soon. And we'll we'll show you a good time, okay? Okay, that sounds great. Have a wonderful honeymoon. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy.